Ani Polimata, you did today a speech here in the IFO Institute and you were opposing uh, Grexit, which is, of course, what Hans Werner Sinn uh, advocates here at the IFO Institute. Why do you oppose Grexit these days? Well, uh, I oppose Grexit because uh, uh, evidently it will have uh, catastrophic uh, effects for Greek citizens. And I would add uh, catastrophic uh, effects to the Greek citizens after five years of an enormous effort, uh, which was mainly uh, directed from the motivation to secure Greece's membership in the EMU. What is the catastrophe that you expect now to come? Because you already have 56 or 60 percent of youth unemployment. What could be worse than that? Uh, it could be much uh, worse because what we uh, desperately uh, need is to be able to rebuild uh, uh, a productive base uh, which will be able to secure uh, a regain of a regain of, of development and growth uh, in Greece. So uh, this uh, effort, uh, together with uh, imperative need to complete a trajectory of uh, modernization uh, of the country in different terms, uh, administration, uh, education, uh, institutions in general, it's uh, totally impossible to happen under the circumstances and the possibilities of a default of an, an exit from the euro. But, um, you know, IFO has uh, uh, researched 70 devaluations with the financial crisis in relation to a financial crisis. And what uh, we have found out is like um, after one or two years of actually very difficult times, then the productive basis was adapting to the new prices. and. It was, there was an upswing following. Wouldn't that be better than just continue another five or ten years of uh, uh, illness? Well, you know, uh, yourself you put uh, a precondition. Uh, you said that uh, uh, it will take one or two years uh, for a productive basis base to uh, regain its competitiveness. And the precondition is that uh, there is a, pro a proper productive base. There is tourism in, in Greece. Yes, but uh, uh, believe me, uh, Greece can do much better than being uh, just um, uh, a touristic uh, location. Like what? Are they, there is, a, and this is again something, uh, you know, um, very challenging that there is a enormous potential uh, for growth in Greece. For example, uh, let me mention two or three areas. Uh, in the energy area, Greece has a huge potential for uh, renewable energy sources. It uh, has never been uh, properly um, yeah. used, you know. Uh, then the agricultural sector, which used to be uh, very competitive uh, in the past and has been destroyed. It's uh, time uh, uh, taking advantage of the uh, unique qualities of the climate and uh, of the uh, Greek uh, uh, ground uh, to rebuild uh, properly and more uh, in, in a more uh, uh, qualitative, uh, qualitative uh, direction, uh, the, the agriculture sector. You were just talking, there's something that struck me, you were talking about uh, an incomplete journey to modernity, and then you were talking about 400 years of Ottoman Empire. Could you please explain what that means in the actual circumstances? Well, you know, I just uh, uh, wanted to uh, illustrate the fact that uh, um, the four, uh, there are strong historic uh, reasons that explain to a great extent um, the half uh, uh, transformation, uh, the, half, the half path towards modern, modernization in modern Greece. Uh, having passed through uh, 400 years of uh, Ottoman uh, occupation, uh, having uh, a, a huge history, but still uh, the creation of the Greek state, it's quite recent. We are talking about 1830. Um, and then the unfortunate uh, historic um, circumstances that took place since then, for example, the seven-year uh, military junta. 
But above all, as I tried also to point it out with my lecture, the fact that uh, uh, we had a combination of um, 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 incompetence from uh, national uh, governments together with um, not a not positive influence uh, from the foreign uh, forces, the so-called. And that uh, led more or less uh, to the situation we are faced to today. Greece uh, became a member of the um, European community then in 1981. Was that too early? Uh, it was not uh, too early. Was it was ahead of Spain and Portugal? Ahead, ahead of uh, Italy and Portugal, actually, and yes. Italy, no, no, and you're of Spain, of Spain yeah. and, and Portugal. And actually, you would be right to remind that uh, the economic situation of uh, uh, Portugal uh, more and Spain less, especially Portugal at that time, uh, was worse uh, than the one uh, in Greece in 1981. But again, to uh, return to the more, more modern era, uh, Greece, despite the general deficiencies that all the periphery countries, let's say the southern countries, were faced to, because as I explained, there were there are still uh, imbalances uh, in the architecture of the EMU, uh, made a better uh, use of the structural uh, funds that received mm -hmm. uh, during the last years from the European Commission. That was not uh, the case in Greece, and mainly uh, this uh, was due uh, to the clientelistic and short-termist uh, political system uh, that uh, was in the country until very recently. But uh, our hope is that uh, with the support and the understanding uh, of our European partners, we will finally, uh, we will be finally able uh, to create uh, a modern state which uh, will be able to deal with these huge challenges of a modern era. You used to be a vice president of the European Parliament for the PASOK party. Now you've left, left the Socialist Party and you uh, are in another uh, party. Um, Mirabeau once said that uh, the public debt was uh, le germe de la liberté, that is the origin of freedom, because it killed the, kill, the, the, the king and uh, the absolutist state. Is this now the Greek Revolution? No, I, I don't think so. Um, I don't think that uh, this uh, saying of uh, Mirabeau uh, can be implied, applied in the, in the current uh, circumstances. Uh, but still, there is a lot of discussion uh, in terms of sustainability of the Greek debt, you know, what the current Greek government claims, uh, what our partners respond to that. But again, the main challenge in terms of sustainability of the Greek debt uh, is what? It's to be sure uh, that this, this step uh, can be uh, served pro properly. Because even if there was a, a, a haircut, mm. the country would not be able, uh, the country in five years would have uh, rebuilt uh, another huge debt if we don't focus on the uh, denominator, which is uh, the growth. Uh, you know, it, it, the discussion should not focus only when we are talking about the debt GDP ratio. We need now uh, to make a shift and focus uh, in the GDP uh, ra ratio more than the depth one. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.